Wow. Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Mikey and welcome back to today's video. So in this video today, I'm going to be discussing how I can study eight hours every single day when I have school productively and without wasting much time. So for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm a pre-med student here at the University of Waterloo in Canada. Now, I know that many of you might be thinking, oh, Michael, you for sure don't do this. And I'm actually going to explain today how I'm able to do this and how I'm able to do this all by 7 p.m. That leaves me so much free time later in the day, whether I want to work out, whether I want to chillax with my friends, I want to play new video games, I want to watch TV, maybe I just want to go on a walk, while also giving me short breaks throughout the day to do stuff like this as well. So the way I'm able to do this is because I give myself three different study blocks that I do throughout the day. So theoretically, let's say I were to wake up at 8 a.m., okay? I usually wake up at 7. Let's say I were to wake up at 8 a.m. Then I would have a study block from 9 to 12. That's the first three hour study block. Take a one hour break where I could do whatever I want. You know, I could watch Netflix. I could chillax, like I said before, play video games. I don't usually play video games, but I could, you know, theoretically, I could play video games. Like if I wanted to, I could, right? So I'd have a one hour break from 12 to 1. Then from one to four, I would have another three hour study block. And this is where I would also get continuous work done. Now in the first two, three hour study blocks, that's where I get most of my work done. Like watching lectures, adding cards to Inky, maybe reviewing, studying, you know, the majority of the work that I wanna do, I will get it done in those two, three hour study blocks. Then I will have another break throughout the day. And that could be a break simply just for eating, same thing, Netflix, chillax, whatever the case may be, I have another break from four to five. So by taking these extended one hour breaks rather than short increments of maybe 15 minute breaks every 30 minutes, I don't get carried away very easily since I have a full hour to do whatever I like and that's in the midst of my studying. So if I wanna catch up on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever the case may be, I can do all that in my one hour break. Then after my break from four to 5 p.m., I usually have another study session from five to seven. And this is kind of the time that I leave for miscellaneous work and that could be like reviewing a paper, maybe emailing for some professors or seeing the work that I have done tomorrow or maybe I want to do some extra work to be better prepared for tomorrow or to get ahead of the class. Alright, so everything that I'm talking about in this video is going to be listed in the timestamps below. So if there's a certain section that you like, you can literally just skip to it instead of watching the whole video and wasting your time. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is wake up early and that's just the truth of it. I personally wasn't a morning person my whole life up until first year undergrad and I really saw the benefits of waking up early. Just think about it, if you wake up at 11 a.m. versus someone that wakes up at 8 a.m., you're going to end up getting your work done three hours later than that person, i.e. you're going to have less free time later in the day to do the things that you like. Now, what I would recommend if you're not a morning person, start trying to wake up early in the morning, maybe have some coffee, maybe have a cold shower, and that'll help you get the day going so that you can start studying. Now, the next thing I want to discuss is the challenge, and the challenge is the actual work that you're going to be completing in your study blocks. So, the first thing I want to discuss is time constraints. Now, the time constraints that you put on your work is very, very important. For example, let's say you told someone that they had a full day to run 10 kilometers. They might be like, oh, that's so easy. I'll walk a bit, maybe I'll jog, I'll have a short break here, then I'll run, and they might complete it over a long amount of time. But if you tell them they have one hour or an hour and a half to run 10 kilometers, then they're gonna be running the whole time, but they'll still be able to finish all the work that they would have got done if they had the whole day to do it. It's kind of the same thing when it comes to an assignment. If you can actually finish the assignment in an hour and a half, then don't give yourself four or five hours to do the assignment. Give yourself that one hour and a half since you'll be able to finish it quicker, blocking out all the procrastination time that you usually be doing, watching Instagram, well, not watching Instagram, scrolling through Instagram or watching Netflix. Now, the second part of the challenge that I wanna discuss is the actual task itself. Now, you have to ensure that whatever task you're choosing, whether that be math, whether that be science, whether that be philosophy, whether that be anatomy, whatever the case may be, you have to choose a task that is not too easy nor too hard for your skills. Now, what does that mean exactly? For example, let's say you have someone that just started running or they just started getting into running and they're running two, three, maybe four kilometers at best. And one day you tell them they're, they're gonna have to run 50 kilometers. Well, obviously, most likely they'll end up failing at it. They might cramp up and things won't end up going their way. That's the exact same thing with studying. You can't have a task that is too hard or too easy. There was actually a Hungarian psychologist named Mihai Csikszentmihalyi Mihai that talked about a state of flow that you can actually get into. Arousal is still good because you are over challenged there. Your skills are not as quite as high as they should be, but you can move into flow fairly easily by just developing a little more skill. So arousal is the area where most people learn from because that's where they're pushed beyond their comfort zone. And to enter that, going back to flow, then they develop higher skills. 
This is a quote by Mihai Chexin Mihai, a Hungarian psychologist that studied the concept of flow. And that's essentially when you get into the zone of studying and when you get the most amount of work done. I'm gonna put a great graph on the screen right here that will show exactly what I'm talking about. If you have too much anxiety or arousal with low skill level, then you're not gonna be able to complete the test. You'll essentially end up failing because you are not in that state of flow. You are not in the middle boundary between skill and arousal. Similarly, if you have too much skill and low anxiety or low arousal, then you're not you're gonna get bored. You're not gonna enjoy the task. So you just need to find that state of flow and continue doing it. You can't set aside eight hours a day to literally answer emails. You'll get, end up getting bored after maybe an hour or two hours. So essentially, you just need to find that state of flow of yours and stick to it throughout the whole time you are studying. Finally, the last thing I wanna discuss is that you need to plan out exactly what you're gonna be doing for that day. You can't just tell yourself that you're gonna wake up and just start studying. That's not gonna end up working out. Now, you have to wake up, figure out exactly what you're going to be doing in your study blocks. Now, as I said before, I would recommend two three hour study blocks followed by a one two hour study block. This is very effective for me because I can get most of my work done in those six hours and use those two hours for any extra work. Sometimes I don't even end up using that work, but I'm able to get as much work done as possible because I know exactly what I'm doing. For example, in the morning, using my first three hour study block, I'll watch lectures. Then after that, maybe I'll review a bit of the lectures. And then my second three hour block, I'll add cards to Anki. Maybe I'll get ready for my content that I have tomorrow. Sometimes I'll use that last two hour study block if I have an assignment, sometimes I won't. So I think it is very important that you ensure that you have a game plan for what you're gonna do that day. Just like I said before, to review everything, what you have to do is try to wake up as early as possible, get into that flow state, put in those time constraints so that you can get as much work done as possible, and finally, ensure that you have a plan for yourself so you can finish as much work as possible in that particular day. Now, I hope you guys did find this video very informative and that some of you actually take it and use it on a day-to-day -day basis because I literally think this is the most effective strategy that people could use and I've been using it a lot. Now, obviously there's a bunch of other studies that work for a lot of people. This is kind of just what I use and I hope that some of you guys will also use it as well. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like, subscribe down below if you want to see more content like this. But other than that, I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.